All right, guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Antler Pursuit TV. Again, with this series, we are on part two of Snapper Week. This episode, we are setting the traps. Next episode, we're probably going to hopefully catch some uh, if, if we can get on some tr nice snappers in these traps. So we're going to go through the video and set, I believe, five different traps for you today. We have five of the same type of traps. Keller, Lincoln, and also Conrad are going to be the doing the talking for each set, as well as we are going to be doing the processes of you know the food, how we place in the food, stuff like that. So enjoy the show and stay tuned to hopefully see us catch some stuff. So enjoy. Do you have a laminator? Yeah, well no, I just actually just use so for the tags. Let me see these tags. So actually um so just use tape, like write down our identification on a blank piece of paper and then you put tape on top of it. It's waterproof and then you zip tie it. So we are completely legal. We got our fishing license. We got our traps. We got our baits. Uh, Keller, what kind of baits are we using for today? Uh, so we have these are chicken livers in here, and then just drumsticks. So we we'll put the drumsticks down in first, and then pour the chicken livers on top of them. Okay, so chicken livers and drumsticks in the plastic baggies, yeah. right? Yeah. And those plastic baggies are actually we're gonna put them inside the uh, little baskets here. So then when they're in the creek, they don't sort of, the bait sort of doesn't wash away and uh, we can reuse that, that meat. So, all right, man, let's go ahead and set the first. It sounds like your truck. Yeah, let me see what kind of bait you're using here, bud. All right, so these are the chicken livers, hold up. Yeah, so those are the chicken livers. And we just put them in a baggie and then we drop that into the Trap. Um, what something I do is actually cut a bunch, did a bunch of holes in the baggies, kind of for you guys to tell. I just took a fork and popped a bunch of holes so the scent's flowing, but yet the bait doesn't get you know, dissolved somehow yeah. in the creek. Uh, nice and oily. Can I see your shirt real quick? No, just <laughs> How does that look, guys? Looks good to me. Yep. We have a little back current here. All right, so we're at our first location. This is a tributary in the Pennsylvania. And again, anytime you're setting traps, follow the regulations of Pennsylvania law or whatever state you're in. You know, there's actually a fish there. I lied, no, that's not a fish. All right, so we're gonna probably just go ahead and plop her in there. We don't really have correct shoes to walk in the water, I don't think, so we're just gonna go ahead and throw it in. But one thing I want you guys to keep in mind, anytime you're setting a trap, the biggest thing to do is to what? Make sure that it is facing downstream especially if you're setting in water so Conrad just said make sure the traps facing downstream so when you are fishing or setting a trap in water it looks very stagnant throw a stick or a leaf in there or watch for bubbles as you can it's very calm but as you can see the bubbles are going downstream and one thing one reason to face it downstream is what because the turtles downstream will follow the scent trail coming up and they won't want to have to like go around and like find the entrance they want to be able to go straight into it. You got it killer. Okay. All right so we found our first spot we have some slow moving water so that's good so the turtles uh, downstream will be able to pick up the scent so what we want to do is make sure that the corner of the trap is up in the water so that the turtles can still get air and won't die, but the bait is still submerged to get the scent into the water. Oh no, it ripped out. Shoot! I dropped the leg. Okay. All right, then put the rope. Conrad, do you want to explain what we're doing with the rope here? Yeah, so in case it floods in the near future, we want to make sure that our traps just don't float away. So we're going to tie it off to a log or a root that is right up on the bank. So we have our trap facing downstream. That's not sturdy. So make sure you find a sturdy root or something. <laughs> Technical difficulties here. And this is a, a live trap, so catch and release is what we want to do. Uh, if you're doing a bottle trap, you can honestly throw them anywhere. And um, hopefully in the next 12 or 24 hours, we have ourselves a solid 10, 12, 14. 16, uh, 17, 25, I'm not sure that we'll see. Um, <laughs> they could even be a 26 or 27, you really don't know. So we're gonna have to figure it out. It could be a 30 incher, 30 pounder. Um, we'll stop at that. So next trap, here it comes. All right, killer's going in. Bear in mind, we are, we see some bubbles. That's a good sign. 
a lot of little minnows. All right, Keller with the uh, walk feet. He's going in. Trap number two, nothing too special. Keller is just going ahead and plop it in there nice and in the mud. That's the most important part. Keller has to get dirty. Um, it's good luck and it's also a good sign because then you know you got, you got, you got down right into that. I know the dank squirrel. Oh uh, yeah, tie this up. Yeah, you can go ahead and tie it up there. We're just using like simple like rope. You know, you can get cut a rope that's 10 feet and it unwind it, and you get three sections. Very simple. I don't really know how well this is gonna work out. We're kind of in the shallows, um, but you know these turtles, middle of the night, they might be traveling 100 yards, 200 yards. We don't know. They could be something buried in the mud. A lot of times, actually, turtles will bury themselves in the mud in the winter time. Take an extra long time. Yeah, yeah. My knot was very un unsatisfactory. Very good. Oh, no. oh, limbo, limbo. Ooh, in there. All right, show the picture, show the camera your feet. That is some nice trap setting right there, boys. Good stuff, man. All right. No. Are we placing bets? Okay. I'm guessing he's going down to his armpits in the mud. What are you guessing, Keller? Four inches. Four inches? I would say to the sock tan. Sock tan, all right. Sock tan to the to the. Oh, oh he's going. I told you. Oh, shoot. That's sock tan. That is a. No, that's. Hang on, he's not. He. It could drop down at least three and a half feet over there. Hang on, he's taking one more step. Oh yeah. Oh, he's going in. Oh, this is no, this is sock tan. Oh yeah. Dude, you gotta take the trap with me. I think he's going to the sock tan. Little deeper. Here, I can go up the other way, dude. So. No, that's good. Just, yeah, that's perfect. You got it, dude. Something like that, right? You guys cool with that? Yeah. yeah. Cool with that. We have, we decided to put it right next to this tree because there's some heavier current coming through there. And hopefully that, that current sort of, sort of grabs that bait and takes it all the way downstream. Down there, it's a lot deeper than it is up, up front, but hopefully, um, another thing is too, if you have lots of trees and stuff in the bushes and it's like a natural funnel, something like this, it could help out a little bit. So what are we doing here, Conrad? Just tying it off. He, we need to make sure that it's lower at the base so because at the top there's more leverage and it can just rip it right out. But lower, if you go lower on the stick that we jammed in, yeah, it should work. And you know we're doing that just in case there's like a flood, the trap washes away. You know that takes that's at least four hundred dollars worth of trap material there. That's a lie, about four bucks maybe, but. Right. Awesome, trap uh, three done, three done. four and five to go.